If a little green is good, more is even better. Now, back to Green is Good with John Shigarian and Mike Brady. Welcome back to Green is Good, and today we are honored to have on the phone from Vancouver, Canada, Brian Scudamore. Brian Scudamore is not only one of the greatest entrepreneurs ever to come out of Canada, maybe in the world, he's a great friend of mine, and he's an inspiration to everybody that he comes in contact with. Brian, it's an honor to have you on Green is Good. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your incredible introduction there. I'm happy to be here. Hey, Brian, let's just start from the top. How did you get 1-800-GOT-JUNK started? Well, I was in a McDonald's drive through of all places. I was in college, well, actually trying to get into college, and needed to find a way to pay for college. I never finished high school. My parents weren't too pleased with that decision, and they said, you know, you're going to have to pay your own way to, to school. If you want to go to college, you're going to have to find the money and, and do it yourself. So I said, okay, I really want to go to college. was in this McDonald's drive through saw a beat-up old pickup truck with plywood side panels built up on the box, and it said uh, Mark's Hauling on the side. And the idea just came to me in an instant. I said, wow, that's what I should be doing is get out there, buy a truck, and build a box on the side, on the, on the back myself, and start hauling junk. And a week later, I went out and bought a truck, formed the company, which today is 1-800-GOT-JUNK. I called the Rubbish Boys at the time, and it funded my way through school and, and then some. But ironically, what actually funded my way through college also inspired me to follow the same pattern and, and drop out of school. Well, so I left, left college after three years of doing a degree, didn't finish, but said, you know what, I'm learning so much more about running a business, or more about business by running a business than I was actually studying in school and made the tough decision to drop out, but there's no looking back. Hey, Brian, and what year was that in? That was 1993, so I've been actually running this business now for 21 years, uh, a little over half my life. Wow. <laughs> and just loving every day. Hey, well, and, and just for our listeners, just to clarify, Brian is, uh, regardless of what he said about colleges and stuff like that, Brian is one of the smartest human beings that I've ever met in my life and, and a great inspiration to me and also has gone through MIT and some programs at Harvard. So, Brian, you've already set yourself apart in, in, in more ways than one. Tell us a little bit about, um, you know, uh, what 1-800-GOT-JUNK does. And for our listeners out there that haven't seen his great brand running around the streets of your local town, go to his great website, 1-800-GOT-JUNK.com. Mike, are you on the website now? I'm on the website right now. and I'm <laughs> Not that it's indicative of anything, but I'm just looking down and, and uh, just see that uh, there's even a careers tab there. Yeah. So if, you're, if you know, you're thinking about maybe... You know, what can I learn from this guy? Well, the best way to go is to to start working for him. Yeah. But uh, it's 1-800-GOT-JUNK.COM. Just a great site with everything about your, your environmental commitment there, Brian. And, uh, you know, just the background, too, your your story, what you have done has been used as a, a case study uh, in the uh, business department at Harvard. It has been. Yeah, they wrote a little, uh, well, I guess not a little, but they wrote a, a case study about us and just how the company was started. And they use it as a case study called the Founder's Dilemma, where they will sit down and, and look at the case of when does an entrepreneur decide to get out of the business or just continue to stick with it and bring others on board and lots of good business lessons in it. And it, it's been my life and there's been a lot of lessons along the way and I continue to learn. And I know, as John mentioned, Harvard and MIT, I've taken some executive programs, but frankly, where I do most of my learning is talking to others. And I will pick up the phone and call other mentors and people that I admire and respect like John or other entrepreneurs who have built different brands and say, hey, here's a challenge I'm having. How have you, have you ever faced a challenge and how have you solved it? Hey, Brian, so talk about the core, what 1-800-GOT-JUNK does for our listeners out there that want to sure. use your service. T tell them what it does, actually, and what you do. Sure, John. So it's a simple business. What started 21 years ago with just a pickup truck hauling junk and taking it off to the disposal or, or recycling station, the business model is essentially the same, but with 2,500 employees, 1,000 trucks, three countries, Canada, the United States, and Australia. The same simple model, yet just bigger and better. And what the model is, is we will come by, a customer just has to point and say, here's what goes, whether it's old furniture, appliances, yard debris, uh, mattresses, any type of furniture, uh, stuff that's in the basement or the attic, 
things that people no longer want, need, they know that we will take those to the proper recycling and reusing facilities that would exist out there. So the thing that I'm excited about with the business, and probably the reason why you had me on, <laughs> on your show, is 61.3% of what we remove is reused, recycled, donated, and so on. So it's funny, we call ourselves a junk removal company. Uh, we're certainly not a junk disposal company. We're much more of a junk recycling company. And uh, we're proud of that. And it's, there's lots of companies out there that claim to, to be very green, and they greenwash, and they say that they do this and that. But it's exciting. We hired an independent company to come in and do a full system-wide audit to come up with a number that 61.3% of what we take is reused, recycled, with a goal of 75% by 2014. So wait a second. You're telling me 21 years of business, and truly your business model was really not just being, becoming the largest privately held trash company in the world, which I think you've become, but you are actually one of the biggest privately held recycling companies in the world because 61% of what you pick up around the world is recycled. Yeah, when you look at what we haul away on a daily basis, we're really choosing uh, not landfills, but we're choosing transfer stations that we know have standards in place of how much they sort through their items. We, we go to uh, material recovery facilities where they will go through and sort out just about everything. You know, things will go down a conveyor belt and they'll shake out all the different items that will then be reused, recycled, and really our, our business model is such that because it's so tightly woven, the, the green side of the business, into our DNA, that when a customer calls us and tells us they've got some good items that might be usable or, or that someone would find that that trash is, is another person's treasure, we say, have you tried Craigslist? If you put it on Craigslist, you might actually get some money versus paying us. Have you tried donating it to the Salvation Army? So we want people to use us as a last resort of knowing that the items just have to go, they've got nowhere else to take them, and then we will take them and, and do the recycling and the recovery. That's, so really, your company as a core part of your DNA was green before it was really cool to be green, before the green revolution has actually taken hold here in North America, you guys were already green. Absolutely. We've been green and we don't do a lot of, uh, we don't do a lot to talk about being green because to me, it's like somebody being honest. If you're honest, you just are honest. You don't tell people you're honest. Well, same thing with us. If you're green and that's the right thing to do, we just get out there and we be green. And uh, we've got some pretty strong environmental philosophies and, and some great visions of where we want to go to. One of our visions for the future of 2014 is to be the first completely paperless enterprise in the world. And uh, it's a big, hairy, audacious goal, and many people in my company get excited about it, but some people just say, Brian, how will we ever be able to do that? And my answer to them is, there's a big possibility there. Just open your mind and your heart to that possibility. We will find a way. That's and wonderful. That's we're, we're, we're leaders. We take the road less traveled, and uh, as a result, we find big possibilities, and we make them happen. We prove to others how those possibilities happen, and then others are inspired to go create possibilities of their own. Perfect. Uh, Mike? You know, it's really cool. Listen to this music. Now, Brian, you know what that is. I'm on your fabulous site right now, and I'm watching the video of the whole process about how your uniform drivers come to the business or to the home. And this is great. There's a video showing exactly how it works. There's even a great pricing structure on your website at 1-800-GOTJUNK.COM. I just typed in my zip code at home, 93726, and found out what it would cost for this much, this much, and this much. You've got pictures of, that describe perfectly what a typical hauling job would be, and uh, there's a no-obligation estimate, too. You come out and visit. What a fabulous site you've got. Again, it's 1-800-GOTJUNK.COM. Hey, so... Uh, and so, Mike, how easy was it? How easy has Brian made the experience? Jeez, oh, man. I mean, I, I know that we have the neighborhood cleanup that happens here in Fresno right, every right. year, but this is like, this is on demand. This is beautiful. <laughs> Brian, there you go. Mike, is, this is the first time. So he's uh, got uh, clean eyes on this, and he's explaining how easy he's finding it. So you're saying the color of your company is blue. So you're saying at 1 800 got junk, blue is the new green. 
Yeah, I mean, in, in essence, our, our colors are actually blue and green. When, when people say they see our trucks everywhere, they usually say, oh, you've got these big blue and green trucks. Perfect. And uh, it's the colors of the planet, and that's actually a coincidence, because when I started the company, I just picked colors I liked uh, before everybody was talking about how green is good, and, and it was something that just worked for me. But it, it's a nice sort of feeling knowing that our brand does also have that representation of being earth friendly and it's in our dna our dna anyways and it's important to us a humble visionary that's what you are talk about a little bit brian where are you though explain to our listeners who are getting excited about using your services now which by the way i recently saw i think on the 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 show that's becoming more and more popular every week hoarders yeah, we, we got lucky there. The Hoarders uh, show on A&E, which is the number one show that they've ever had on their network, approached us. And Screaming Flea Productions, the production company, used us on one job on Hoarders and said they just fell in love with the brand and the way we did things. And they've had us on every single episode oh. since. So you can't get product placement like that for hey. free. I mean, that's just we got we got lucky. Now, yeah, well, listen again. You know, I, all your hard work of twenty one years. You know, what, what what did Malcolm Forbes say? The harder I work, the luckier I get. Something of that nature. So, oh, I couldn't couldn't agree more. <laughs> so, talk about a little bit. Where are you? So, so our listeners who want to use your service, where are you in Canada? Where are you in the United States? Where are you around the world? So we're in Canada. The United States and Australia. I just came back from a trip in Australia and was pleased to see that Australians have the same junk as, uh, as Americans <laughs> and Canadians and just as much of it. But we're in the top 100 metros in all three of those countries. Great. So and as where long are you as there's going the size to? and the population, Great. we're there. And where are you, where, what's the dream? Where are you going to next? Because I know you are always, as you talked about, 2014, and we're only here in 2010. Walk us through the next two, three, four years. What's your vision? What's next? Yeah, so by 2014, we will be in eight countries worldwide. So we'll be throughout the United Kingdom, we'll be in New Zealand. We're really going to tackle the world market on junk removal. And when you look at a company like Waste Management, who's become the largest company in the world in actual garbage, right. we are the largest in junk. And we are currently, but, uh, you know, building a globally admired brand three countries just isn't good enough. So we'll be in five more countries by 2014, and we're excited by that challenge. Everybody's got junk. Most people don't have the time, the know-how, where to take it, how to recycle it. They don't have a truck, or they don't want to borrow a buddy's truck. So it's a, it's a great niche market that even as the world becomes greener and people create less, uh, it, it's still an opportunity. There's, most people don't know our brand exists or what we do and how we do it. And as the awareness continues to be built, and as we continue to wow our customers, opportunities are endless. And, and space is a value commodity, so people get to have their space back. Absolutely. I mean, that's the, that's the emotional tie that people, one of the sort of emotional connections to our brand is people just go, oh, thank goodness, I got my space back and free. I don't have a cluttered garage. I don't have a cluttered basement. I can finally turn that garage into, you know, a, an artist uh, sort of office or studio, or I can finally take the, the basement that was packed with boxes of old books and junk and everything that's been sent off to the Salvation, Salvation Army and the rest picked up by 1-800 got junk and now we can put uh, a big screen tv and a couple of couches in there and have a family media room people <laughs> I've been... are taking their space and they're seeing the possibility of what they can do with that space versus just the 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 lack of possibility of having the clutter hey i you know i've been to your a annual conference brian and i think you know the world of you and what you've uh, created and you. and how you make everything happen and 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 the people you've surrounded yourself with i've heard that the the this, this year's annual conference is, uh, is focused on green. And so why don't you share with our listeners a little bit about the other green initiatives that you're going to be focusing on to share with your franchisees from around the world on what you're doing next besides becoming a paperless company. Talk about some of the other things, the DNA that you're going to be uh, inst instilling in your company. Sure. So even at our conference, we've asked all our franchise partners to bring laptops they're getting uh, flash drives with all the content for the conference that will be uh, taken off the network, and, and they'll be fully wired at our conference rather than having any paper. So where a lot of conferences, I think most conferences, you, you just show up and you get all your, your gifts and your, your swag and all that sort of stuff. You know, <laughs> we're not giving any stuff like that. We're not creating extra junk. We're sitting there and saying everything's digital. It's all online. This is how you can access it. 
and uh, we want people to be more environmentally friendly. In terms of little initiatives, we're starting one where we're, we're saying, okay, you know what, there's enough people using paper cups around here. We're going to buy everybody a, uh, you know, a reusable mug and say, here's the deal. We buy your reusable mug. Whenever you get coffee, whenever you're grabbing a hot drink or what have you, this is what you use. Uh, and, and make a little accountability policy with everybody in the company that nobody's allowed uh, paper cups in the office or styrofoam or any of that stuff. So if somebody loses their mug, they're going to have to go buy another one because the team's going to hold them accountable. And someone walks in with a, a paper Starbucks cup, everyone's going to be like, whoa, what are you doing? Don't come in here. And uh, in terms of you know, some of the bigger stuff we're going to do, it's things, one of our, uh, our, our big, hairy, audacious goals in our <laughs> painted picture vision is to be the largest donator of, of reused goods um, to the Salvation Army and to the goodwill on the planet. That's great. So, you know, we get so much great stuff. Yep. We want to be the largest donator to them. Now, why don't you share how typical the stuff is that, that you get so our listeners can understand that almost any you can pick up almost anything and also share some of the weirder, wilder things you've picked up over the 21 years. Sure. So you, you'll get people, our, our drivers, we've always got a driver and a navigator that show up in a clean, shiny truck. They'll go into someone's basement. What would they typically see? Well, it depends on why someone is calling us. If they've been doing a renovation to their kitchen, we're going to be hauling away gyprock rock or sheet rock. We're going to be hauling away some tiles from the backsplash. We're going to be hauling away their old dishwasher, their old sink, um, their old kitchen cupboards. If they're calling us because they're cleaning out a basement, it's going to be boxes of old books and old clothes and broken toys and things that people have stored away for years that they've just never gone to visit. Um, if somebody's calling us because they've got a backyard that they're cleaning up, it's, it's the start of spring and they've decided let's clean up from the winter. They're raking up their leaves. They're getting rid of old branches. They're cleaning out their garden shed. They're having us haul away those types of items. So when you look at anything we haul away, whether it's wood, green waste, cardboard, newspaper, any paper goods like books, any furniture, any appliances, everything for the most part is recyclable. That's true. We try and sort through our trucks as we load to say, okay, when we go to a recycling depot, let's make sure we can pull off all the metal first and toss it in the metal bin. Let's pull off all the, the paper goods and put it in the paper bin. Some transfer stations that we use in many markets are more of uh, materials recovery facilities where you dump everything on the floor and they've got machinery and, and people that are going through and conveyor belts that are sorting all these items. So it's important to us and not just important to us from a marketing standpoint, but more importantly, as again, being part of our DNA, it, it's you build a company, or at least I believe I'm building a company based on people, treating people right, and people doing good things for the world. You know, you've got to build a company that's leaving a legacy that's making a positive difference versus a negative impact on the planet. Well, you know, when you're talking about treating people right, I did see on your website, Brian, that your company was voted as the number two best company to work for in Canada. Absolutely. Something we're proud of. And we were voted twice the number one company to work for in British Columbia, so in our province here. And the, the reason being, people always wonder, well, how, how do you guys get to be one of the best companies in Canada? Well, we bring on the best people. We bring on people that are good people, that like a good challenge, that see possibility and make things happen. And people are just tied into our culture and our brand and they're excited and they're passionate and they want to make possibility come true and by having the right people who who can dream and and and, and lead people and learn and it's just been fantastic so i, I i'm sure we'll, we've got many more awards coming our way which <laughs> it's not about the awards it's about the the internal pride that we feel that we say wow you know look at the people we've got here how lucky are we to work with such such fantastic people. Hey, Brian, you know, a couple things. I want our listeners to understand, uh, you know, because everyone wants to be more green now, they should be using your service because over 61% of the stuff that you pick up gets recycled. But we do have a lot of entrepreneurs or budding entrepreneurs that listen to our show. Give us, we're down to the last couple minutes. Can you share a, two or three of your, uh, you know, pearls of wisdom for the, for the entrepreneurs out there that want to become the next Brian Scudamore? <laughs> well, for entrepreneurs that want to build a business, I think the number one thing that I remember being a big successful uh, sort of move for me was reading Michael Gerber's book, The E-Myth Revisited. So it's E-Myth, the E-Myth e Revisited. 
just an incredible book. It's one I've read several times. That's really been a, a huge guide and influence to my business and a source of inspiration. It tells how to build your business and grow and scale based on people, based on systems, that if you have the right systems and processes in place, that allows you to leverage your own abilities and talents and, uh, and, and develop your people further. So a fantastic book, uh, easily the best book that I've uh, ever read in business, and great. one that's had the biggest impact on me. Great, great. And what else? What, what, what other little pearls of wisdom? Two more. Give sure. it to our listeners. So number two is... It's all about people. So when people come into our office, the junction, the first thing they see is a big vinyl decal on the wall that says it's all about people. We're building a business while we're all about, you know, junk removal and, and, and recycling and being green and, and hitting lofty goals and growing across the world. The, the core sort of thing that stands behind us is that we're building a business that's all about people, building a, a team that's the right people and treating those people right. And so I, I learned a long time ago, I called one of my mentors, the, the late Greg Brophy, who built a company called Shred It to about a half a billion dollars. Sure. And I asked him years ago, what's the number one thing I need to know from a successful entrepreneur? And he said, don't ever, 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 ever compromise on the people you bring into your company. And uh, there was a day when I used to compromise. In fact, 1994, I had 11 staff members, brought them all in the office one day and got rid of all of them because I said, you know what? Your leader, myself, has let you down. We don't have the right people here in place. I haven't you know, given you guys the right goals, the vision. I don't feel I can fix this thing. And because I didn't have people aligned with my values and vision, uh, I had to start again. And from that day, I learned it is all about people, and I've made very different decisions. The third point, real quick here, because I know we've got to run, is uh, vision. Have a clear picture of what your compelling future, your envisioned future for your business looks like. Don't get stuck in the hows and think, well, I can't do this, I can't do that. How are we going to figure this out? We don't have enough money. Just get a clear picture on what possibility could look like. Take a clear picture of your vision of the business and share that with every person around you involved in the business or not. Just get the word out there to the universe and start turning your possibility into a reality. Well, Brian, you know, Mike Brady and I are so thankful for your precious time because you are not only a good friend, but you truly are an amazing inspiration. And most important, Brian Scudamore, you are living proof that green is good.